Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are consuming this broadcast. Welcome to Ionisms, a straight talk, slow burn podcast on everything around movies, politics, a little bit of geopolitics, pets, reactions, and of course, our favorite cricket. In this episode, as you can see, we're going to talk about India's T20 World Cup prospects. And in this particular discussion, I'm referencing Mr. Harsha Bogle's T20 World Cup squad for India and see if that makes sense. Clearly, they, or as the cliche goes, there won't be a consensus and I don't expect it to be. But before I share my thoughts on the players that he chose, let me set a couple of things up front so that I don't have to repeat it during the course of the conversation. Given that you're playing for India, the top, forget the top 11, the top 30 are super talented. No questions about that. Without talent, it's unlikely that you would be even considered anywhere close to it. So I'll not repeat if I'm omitting a player. It's not because of they lack talent. It's because of multiple other factors that come into being. Second point that I will reference is when you pick a team, it has to be basis what? Basis, the current understanding that we have is of the immediate form the player is in and the future potential. Clearly, like I mentioned before, so I won't repeat it last time. They are talented. Temperamentally, are they suited or not? My thinking is, if there was a scorecard approach, like think of the classical balance scorecard, like a, on a scale of one to five, five being excellent and one being poor, list down 10 parameters for you to qualify for the Indian team and see how the person scores against those 10 points. So if you're going to pick an opener, for example, then averaging uh, above 70, 80 or strike rate above 150 over 10 matches. If it is yes, then the rating is 5. If it is no, then rating is lesser progressively. Fielding in the slips could be another major factor or uh, ability to bowl in maybe two overs or one over is specific to T20, of course. So you, you think of, or, or you can think of temperament, big match temperament, pressure handling ability, capacity, cognitive ability, so many things, right? So you can list down those points and say, and name the players and see how they score. And then whoever gets the highest average or total score, it automatically ring fences you with the pool of players. And then you add your cricketing experience, your gut feel, because you're the chairman of selectors or people who influence the team selection. You have a whole bunch of other variables. But the fundamental weightage of the scorecard is, say, 50% or 60%, and then 10% on current form, 10% on future potential, 10% on somebody's gut feel, and so on and so forth. And yeah, so you can... Then, if you have this, it gives a more robust explanation of why you have ring-fenced these 30 players or these 20 players who potentially, of which will pick 11 to play in the squad. And then, if you maintain that scorecard over a period of time, then it no longer will be a surprise as to whether they qualify for the team or they don't qualify for the team. right? And so, it is very important to realize where they stand in the larger scheme of things basis some scientific mechanism lastly the the strategy to pick a team are you going to go ahead with my batters are going to win the game for me or are you going in with thought that the bowlers are going to win this for me or all rounders will win the game game as in the tournament the series or the tournament for me the world cup for me i think sometimes this question is not answered maybe it's not possible to answer it in absoluteness but the tilt, will your will your squad be tilting more towards being batter friendly? Seems to be the most obvious thing given how boundaries are short. But then bowlers win you matches by taking wickets. So are we saying then that we are ruling out the option of bowlers given the fact that it's going to be in the Caribbean and partly in the United States where I don't know the pictures there, but the the moisture in the air will probably be conducive to swing but the wickets in, uh, in in the caribbean will be not so pacey or bouncy as probably they used to be 
So it will be a bit of a contrast. So how do you then pick a team? So my sense is we have to have this multiple strategies of which at the think tank, core think tank level, you've got to be absolutely clear about how you want to progress with the team. So what, what, what is your framework? I'm going to go in six batters, four bowlers, one wicket keeper, five batters, five bowlers, or what's your, or you're going to say three pure play batters, three pure bowlers and balance all all rounders. Is that the mix that you want to go? So I think before you decide a team, pre-decide a team, I would draw up this framework and then see how many names fit into those that strategy. And that strategy cannot come from the skipper. That strategy has to come with discussing with at least the all the selectors and of course some of the thinkers of the game. Right. So that being said, let's jump into what uh, the the squad looks like. You can already see on the on the screen. Now I won't go into his commentary, and you should definitely check out his video. It's it's very well, and it's hard to argue with Mr. Bogle's logic, right? He's a very uh, is in a very well read cricketer and an astute student, if you, if I may say so. So I'm not, and and there will not be. But I'll just the 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 questions that I pose or ask will be reflective and not rhetorical. Right? The idea is to see if you are thinking on the same lines. And so right up at the top. Uh, you have Mr. Sharma and Jaiswal. You did have options of having Mr. Shubman Gill, and I'm reading off the, the chart here as well. Uh, there is Ruturaj Gaikwad, there is KL Rahul, Ishan Kishan, Abhishek Sharma. Now, given that Mr. Sharma is, you know, he retains that spot despite me not being so bullish about his opening batting. He's been suspect to left arm uh, incoming deliveries and um, and he's got to those quick fire 30s. I'm, I would want to see him cross over to the quick fire 70s or 80s at about 150 or 170 strike rate. That hasn't happened and isn't likely to happen. All right. If that is the reality, do you still retain him as an opener? My answer is probably yes, because of his captaincy, people management, big match, galvanizing the team ability, because the rest, I don't see who can do that. And I know some of you VK fans are thinking separately, but let's park that aside. So that's why. So he, he retains the spot basis, these two reasons. The next opener, the non-striker, if you will, uh, should it be Mr. Jaiswal or Mr. Gill? Now, just because Mr. Gill has had a average run in the past few weeks or months until before he fell ill, I think, before I think he had a bout of dengue or something like that, he was unstoppable. Right? He was the flavor of the season. And then, so are we ignoring that? Are we ignoring that factor that he is displayed big match temperament? He is displayed the calmness, the match situation, awareness. Are we ignoring that? So it is kind of reflective that instead of having two right-handers, I would retain Yashasvi Jaiswal purely from a left-hander, aggressive, can tempo complementary, right-left combination. But three down, one, two, three down. I think Mr. Bogle was more uh, leaning towards Sanju Samson. I don't think he is an automatic selection because I'd keep Shubman Gill, who can accelerate as well, followed by Samson. Now, then does VK feature in the scheme of things? Now, VK is a classical textbook player. It's he's he's got at least four four years left in Test cricket at least two to three years in ODI cricket, if not more. In T20 cricket, if you expect VK to score at 150 strike rate and then probably end with a flourish, it seems to me a stretch. It is a stretch. He might do that on one odd occasion because he's naturally a class player, a textbook, a touch player. And 
suddenly if you want to him to go dre rus mode the beast mode it is difficult yes there is the aura quotient of it and all that but that can be your single strategy to pin on and and it also depends on how long do they do it you know typically when uh, there, there is a time when he was getting out to off fourth uh, you know balls outside the fifth stump fourth stump consistently where bowlers were like okay let's bowl three four consecutive deliveries outside uh, the off stump the fifth one he is bound to nick and he was getting out that way there was a big phase where you he was getting out to spin zampa got him multiple times rashid got him multiple times and so on and so forth so, and and it's largely to do with mind over matter right he's, he wants to he goes committed too far forward and he wants to go on the charge and aggressive and and show intent and all that and sometimes it backfires because bowlers have also figured him out i mean he's a brilliant player okay i won't revisit the talent conversation but you get what i'm saying but to fit in a t20 world cup squad in 2024 i'd probably leave him out i know none of again i have utmost respect for the man for what he's done as a player not such a great fan of his captaincy but great as 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 a batter especially in test cricket and you can't really uh, look beyond that so i would probably have so just to recap i would have uh, sharma and uh, jaswal open followed by gill as the next uh, person in and then i would promote dube so left right left right goes on like a marching squad now dube has been good against spin in the middle overs he's figured his uh, game out risk element is if somebody keeps on repetitively bowling at the rip cage at 145 clicks he's a bit still circumspect i know he's pulling and hooking a little bit more but world cup pressure is world cup pressure right and so i would probably slot in dube still given the fact that he's young hand eye coordination as at his best he's playing well at in in ipl and some some of all these parts add up to a position right there uh then i would debate between sky yeah after so left right left right then you have sky coming in um and uh, he does not automatically warrant a place the reason for that is i think he's got caught in the swag lock and if that's a expression you understand swag lock means he has to prove that he's the swag and without giving himself any time he he wants to go 360 from get go i mean like it's okay to take three deliveries or four deliveries it's fine i know it's t20 and you want to make an impression of intent and stance and all that and intimidate bowlers but give you some time so sometimes he the the genius or the brilliance spills over to recklessness and so sports people generally should be game aware you know what is the situation of the match you know we have often heard this in press match conferences post match conferences i i wanted to express myself of course you want to express yourself but express yourself to the moment to the what the occasion demands basis which you express yourself not because you want to express mr sharma has gotten out in, in 45 multiple times trying to pull he will counter argue the number of times i've crossed over and hit a six with a hook shot is much higher now of course we don't want him to abandon his hook shot or pull shot but we also want to make sure that it is n- not against the the flow of the game read where the game is if the bowler is on top the ball is swinging or you know doing too much give him play him out maybe give it an over or so you can always accelerate and make up so sometimes i feel that thing thinking element has gone down you know we are at a stage of evolution in cricket where big talented alone will not help you have to now outthink the bowler outsmart the batter outwit the outrun the fielder in sums so somewhere that delta zone has crept in but you have to operate in the delta and he who excels in the delta emerges on top and sometimes i feel that uh, folks like uh, shivam dube or even rohit sharma from time to time kind of uh, and, and sky uh, from time to time miss that point which brings me to the next uh, person mr uh, mr uh, rishabh pant now will rishabh pant in these 
situations in life where he met with a tragic accident are sometimes life altering you know it, it alters your perception of how you used to uh, you led your life before and how you lead your life after such an incident now is he a more mature cricketer now has he is he going to put a price tag on his wicket lot more than what he did earlier i'm yet to see that of course my sympathy is with him this is a tragic thing and it's a, it takes great courage to bounce back but if you do recall barring the sydney test the general feedback even the century that he scored in england was when we had already lost the series right the fourth one and i'm not nitpicking look I told you the talent conversation is off the chart off the table right that that's there it's like when you when do you rise up to the occasion right and so there have been more instances where he has thrown away his wicket when he could have guided the team home or made a bigger impact and so sometimes his temperament is is where it, it's a bit of a question i'm sure he will he has got six seven more matches to go and his batting will you know get back into that muscle memory so left right left right that theme uh, is very going to be very irritating and time consuming for the field to com- constantly get reset which might work in the team's favor as they they could be one fielder short maybe by the 16th over or 17th over and so i would fit in um, mr pant at uh, after um, after sky and then then it becomes little tricky right so do, are we saying we'll leave out mr pandya like go go back to that interview i think where he said uh, why were you bowling short i know it will work he will go and he hit and get out and see the person got out i think it was a new zealand match or england i, I forget now he's a temperamentally volatile player right he goes high and low with that which mercurial right which is slightly dicey in the sense you need a you need someone to be expressive and spontaneous but you also need someone to remain calm under pressure now right now the space between two years is very very messed up and, and like mr bogle said he's probably okay with the bowling i don't think he's okay with the bowling getting uh, half trackers at 135 138 is, isn't going to be dealt with very kindly it is going to be dispatched mercilessly mercilessly and if you are at this in this ego battle where i will get you out even after getting belted for 24 and say uh, i see i got you out with my short pitch delivery that's not a smart smart strategy and then when it comes to his batting is he there yet no i don't think he's there yet he's kind of trying to uh, belt his way out or hit his way into form if you will that doesn't seem to me a great uh, way to do it so i'd probably give him some space probably need some time away from the game go back reset re reassess and then come back you know with peace and and stuff like that so i i would leave him out now then it comes to uh, mr jadeja he picks himself in the squad uh, purely from his 360 degree ability being it a fielder firing in a few overs and of course uh, batting now his batting in t20s after the last two last years ipl uh, hasn't been right up there but then he hasn't gotten got too many chances so i would still re- put him in the squad just for you know who else will bat given the fact that we're leaving out mr pandya and then we get into the bowling so mr bumra picks himself for the team yorkers he's been bowling a little less and he's been uh, be- belted in smallish grounds right 55 meters 60 meters so I, i i don't think it it would dent his confidence or performance but somewhere i thought he 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 will probably have to think about his away going delivery as well as his yorkers because when you expect that then you are extra cautious extra defensive so then he has to remember the delta conversation i think he has to excel in that delta space where he is outwitting outthinking outsmarting the batter and so no doubt about him being in the squad clearly he will be there uh mr bogle puts arshdeep uh in the space i i won't put uh, arshdeep in that space not because he can't it's because the, the sharpness of that incoming delivery is missing that we saw a couple of uh, seasons ago i think somewhere that that is uh, getting missed out a little bit 
and so temperamentally he's gotten hit multiple times so i don't know where he is in his headspace probably he's all set and clear but i i wouldn't pick him uh in the squad but before i move on i just for forgot one more name so tilak varma what would be my stand in in case sky doesn't perform in a couple of innings back to back right especially in in one or two big games in while facing minos all these guys will go tong you know hammer and tong so no doubt about it but big games is what it it matters so i'd keep tilak varma warm uh, as part two or replacement if sky doesn't perform and so from a bowling standpoint um, i i would probably keep um, uh aksar patel yeah i was looking at the list here so i I put aksar patel uh as uh, so you would think two left handers so jadeja and aksar but aksar also comes in from a batting standpoint so if jadeja is not firing or is injured then aksar is a good like to like replacement right so uh if it is bumra as a pacer then i'd probably bet on mayank yadav i do not know how fit he will be if in two games he has developed a side strain and is not being able to uh, play at the pace his the goal is not to then find another bowler who can bowl at 140 clicks there are many to pick from his x factor is he gets to 150s 155s and that takes people by surprise but, but by the end of the tournament many will figure him out but uh, because he is new and not faced too much no matter how much videos you study when something is coming at you at 150 clicks it takes some time to get over it right so i would pick him with bumrah see the again one of the strategies is to be relentless right there's no space to breathe it almost feels claustrophobic in an open ground when there is boom right around the end belting down at 145 then somebody comes at 155 and then you have kuldeep you you're just like almost like oh my god this doesn't stop and that's what you want to that's what um, teams uh, almost mentally bulldoze the opposition and so i would put uh, mayank yadav for that x factor reason but if that is not the case i would definitely look at avesh khan uh, as as uh, bumrah's uh, tag team partner if you will he's got it but his fielding is suspect you have to believe that in t20 there is no space to hide so fielding is bit suspect so then should you get siraj in i i am not too sure about he, he needs a kohli to charge him up and if i'm not taking kohli then who charges up um uh, siraj right so siraj needs this pump sometimes and um if that is missing then he it takes some time for him to get into the zone and in t20 before you get in the zone your zone is over like the match is over if you will so i would pick uh, avesh and uh, just be to open the bowling as in uh, fast bowling and then uh, of course if mayank is there and again it depends from Uh, opposition to opposition and uh, ground to ground where it is swinging more then i'd probably pick a sandeep sharma who would swing it but if it's not going to swing it's going to be flat then i would probably think of uh, harshit rana uh, somewhere um, and yeah in spin i would toss it up between kuldeep and chahal uh, purely because of some of the uh batting that kuldeep brings in over and above the bowling clearly he's much better smarter bowler remember those days when he was you, you could see on his face he, he was under severe pressure especially that uh, moin uh, moin ali belting that happened in england right that was merciless it was just relentless but from that to where he is today is is a big transformation so so good job done there so i'd probably keep uh, uh, sandeep sharma if it is a swing or mayank yadav if it is a bouncy and pacey track and then probably one more right um, I, i i don't know i would want to carry uh, someone of the yeah probably carry siraj you know so you can again mix and match mix and match and see uh, who fits in the bill the the most right and so that would be my 11 with a couple of backups here and there 
And of course, do I drop uh, Kohli? I would carry him as backup. I would carry him. It's a big statement to make. But I would carry him as backup. Imagine if Sharma gets injured. Imagine if uh, one of the, if Gil doesn't perform. So it's a like-to-like -like replacement. I'd probably not keep it at, uh, as, as my front line uh, number three batter. That's all the time that I had. I know this will open Pandora's box. This is, you know, cricket is, everybody has got a counter logic. I must have missed out on some uh, players, so my apologies. But love to hear some of your comments behind the thought process. If you think the thought process is off somewhere, leave your comments. If you think this is what uh, makes sense to you, do let me know and do share with uh, those who would probably appreciate this kind of content. Until we meet the next time, my name is Ayan and you were listening to Ayanisms. Peace out.